Ooh, welcome investors. Let's discuss disclosures real quick. I am an individual investor. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. My name is Dave and this is The Market Board. Today, we're going to take a look at Northern Star Acquisition Corp stock ticker STIC. Northern Star Acquisition Corp is a special purpose acquisition company formed for the sole purpose of bringing Bark, a private company currently, public in quarter two of 2021. So we really need to find out who is Bark. Founded in 2012, Bark loyally provides dogs nationwide with a monthly subscription service, including BarkBox and Super Chewer. Additionally, they provide a curated e-commerce experience on BarkShop.com, a custom collection via its retail partner network including Target and Amazon, wellness products that meet your dog's need with their new line Bark Bright, as well as their new personalized meal delivery service called Bark Eats. That's quite a mouthful for sure, and before digging into the details, I think it's first important to note who we're doing business with, and to do that, we need to take a look at their management. Manish Joinja is the new CEO at Bark. He has two decades of experience scaling businesses through consumer-centric product and technological innovation, omni-channel commerce, global expansion, and operational transformation. Before Bark, he served as a leader at Amazon's Worldwide Operations Division focused on global exports and expansion. Before Amazon, he spent five years with eBay, where he led a mix of business, product, and operations. And before eBay, he spent some time consulting some brands such as Nordstrom, Polo Ralph Lauren, Nike, Gap, Sony, and Microsoft. Matt Meeker is a co-founder and currently the executive chairman of Bark and former CEO. He served as CEO from its foundation up until September of 2020 when Manish took over to help scale the business. He's an integral part of the New York startup community acting as a board member or advisor to multiple early stage companies. And in 2002, Matt also additionally co-founded Meetup. Henrik Verdelin is another co-founder of Bark and he leads design content and product development. Henrik's experience ranges from working with, advising, or investing in startups such as Hot Potato, Go Try It On, Read Mill, and Sunrise, some of which have now been acquired by other much larger companies. Before becoming an entrepreneur, he was vice president of product development and strategy for MTV Networks International, where he spearheaded the development of many MTV's award-winning products. Additionally, he has been named top 100 most creative by Fast Company and top 100 people in tech by Silicon Alley Insider. Additionally, we have Carly Strife, another founder of Bark. She currently leads strategic Bark initiatives, including Bark Eats. Before Bark, she was actually an early employee at Uber hired to launch the New York operation. Carly has also been featured on the 30 Under 30 list for both Forbes and Inc. magazines, and she has an apparent passion for motorcycles. And finally, we have John Ledecky, an American businessman and current co-owner of the NHL team, the New York Islanders, and their AHL affiliate, the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. This is the third SPAC that Ledecky has been involved in, the others being XL Fleet and Apex Clearing. On that note, now it's probably time to address what is a SPAC. A special purpose acquisition company, also known as a SPAC, is a company with no commercial operations that are formed strictly to raise capital through an initial public offering or an IPO to acquire an existing company. SPACs generally have about two years to complete an acquisition or they must return their funds to investors. Typically, this is refunded at about $10 a share. The reason many companies are going this route is for the faster IPO process under the guidance of an experienced partner. However, it should be noted that experienced partner typically receives about 20% of the common equity in the SPAC according to Jefferies. Why is this worth noting? Well, this in theory could incentivize SPAC sponsors to push the stock to gain maximum return for themselves. As investors, we just always need to be wary of dangers and carefully vet any investment we make, whether it's a SPAC or not. Protect yourself always by being informed. And remember, like, comment, and subscribe so you won't miss out on any future videos. Let's move on to taking a look at some of the partnerships that Bark has managed to roll out. In 2018, we saw Target Retail and Amazon start to sell BarkBox products. Additionally, Bark opened the very first Bark Park shared experience in Nashville, Tennessee, as well as a sponsorship deal with a major in Subaru. In 2019, we saw them expand that to Bluestone Lane and Glossier. 
And finally, in 2020, things really took off with partnerships with Dunkin' Donuts, PetSmart, Petco, Costco, HomeGoods, CVS, Walmart.com, TJ Maxx, and Bed Bath & Beyond. Additionally, we see that BarkBox has actually partnered with many local rescues and shelters across both the United States and Canada, utilizing their affiliate program. Each partnering organization receives a custom code, and for each BarkBox subscription purchased using their code, BarkBox will donate $25 to that rescue shelter. And on one final note of goodwill, Bark donates 5% of all proceeds generated from their Bark shop directly to dogs in need. But what do they actually do? Now, let's take time to probe into the products they have. BarkBox, their main service, is a monthly themed box of toys and treats, as well as unleashed joy, thoughtfully designed to satisfy every dog's unique play style. They have the Bark Super Chewer, which is a monthly themed box of tougher toys, treats, and chews for the adventure-seeking dog, designed to challenge and engage for longer-lasting play. The main difference between box one and two is the size of your dog. And then we get into their new line of products, Bark Bright, a health and wellness support that makes caring for your dog simple, effortless, and worth a full body tail wag. Bark Eats, a drool-worthy meal customized for every dog, crafted by nutritionists and delivered to your door in perfect portions. As well as Bark Home, as they describe as being all the rest of the essentials, being collars, leashes, beds, furnishings, etc. And the best news about all their products is that every single one of their products are made exclusively for Bark. Now, full disclosure, financial details of SPACs are generally pretty limited, but we can take a look at some of their hand-picked results that have been released to this point. BarkBox provides us with three long-term metrics and some catalysts that they expect might drive them further. Revenue growth, gross margin, and core adjusted EBITDA. In the way of revenue growth, Bark expects new subscriptions and customers, new products, and their omni-channel expansion to act as a catalyst going forward. In the way of gross margins, they see the driving factors being a mix of revenues, revenue per subscription, and average order value, as well as a cost efficiency from scale. And finally, Driving the core adjusted EBITDA, we see sales and marketing efficiencies, leverage in warehouse and fulfillment, and stable G&A. According to their December 2020 presentation, BarkBox had 1.1 million active subscribers. They revealed insights into the gross profit of each subscription through just 8 months, and the numbers are actually shocking. Since 2018, they have consistently built on their ability to capture each dollar effectively, seeing subsequent jumps in both 2019 and 2020, and anticipate a larger jump in 2021 as they continue to scale rapidly. We can take a look at the numbers and see the gross profit per subscription through 8 months in 2018 was about $71, and expectations running through 2021 have it rising all the way to $108 per subscription. The increase in subscriptions have also led to a consistent gain in net revenues, reporting an impressive 23% compound annual growth rate between 2018 and 2020. However, things really take off as BarkBox projects themselves having an absolute absurd compound annual growth rate of 47% between 2021 and 2023. BarkBox reports that they had a gross profit of $84 million in 2018 before growing to $107 million in 2019 and $135 million last year in 2020. Their latest estimates result in a projected gross profit of $221 million in 2021 and that jumps to over $400 million by just the end of 2023. If that isn't enough to get your tail wagging, let's look at a couple more details. BarkBox claims to have two times new subscription growth year over year in 2021 to date. They have seen two and a half times growth on Amazon year over year and they already rank highly and have a stellar amount of reviews. They had a record high 94.4% monthly product retention in their most recent period. They post strong gross margins in the first half of 2021 of 61.2%. We have seen an increase of 179% year over year in revenue from new product lines from the first half of this year. And we have seen a three and a half times increase in consumer cross-selling year over year in just the first half of 2021 as well. Although this isn't a financial statistic, it is something worth noting. BarkBox already has a whopping 1.7 million Instagram followers, plus an additional 6.8 million followers across other social media channels. In comparison, 
Chewy has just 688,000 Instagram followers, despite being a significantly larger company. And just one last little tidbit, Morgan Stanley released a research about a month ago that projected that the U.S. pet care market will expand approximately from $120 billion in 2020 all the way to $277 billion by 2030 at a compounded annual growth rate of 8% when compared to just 3% over the past decade. Additionally, we see strong support in the way of institutional ownership. We see Magnetar has almost 10% ownership, CNH Partners over 3%, AQR Funds over 3%, Bluecrest Capital Management over 2%, and Kingstown Capital at about 2% as well, with total institutional ownership coming up at just over 40%. While this doesn't mean much by itself, this could show some insight that there are some large funds that are also looking to add Bark to their portfolio. Bark also presented some interesting pet benchmarking statistics that we can take a look at. Against their competitors, Chewy, Fresh Pet, and True Pen, looking at the expected compound annual growth rate of revenue between 2020 and 2022, we see Chewy expects to grow 22.5%. Fresh Pet expects to grow 26.8%, True Panion expects 24.5% growth, and BarkBox finishes best in class expecting a growth rate of 41.2% between 2020 and 2022. In my own market research, I found that their top competitor in the pet care is a subscription box industry to be BullyMake. BullyMake is owned by the Carlisle Group and they trade underneath the ticker CG. BullyMake makes very similar packages to BarkBox, just that their packages are both higher priced and only suitable for large breeds of dogs. Keep in mind, BarkBox has their own large breed subscription box line. Additionally, BarkBox actually manufactures all of their own products, whereas most of their comps don't, including BullyMate. This boosts margins by cutting out a middleman and de-incentivizes customers from switching to another pet care company in a way that the big box retailers simply can't. Briefly, let's use SWOT analysis to review the information we have covered today. In the way of strengths, BarkBox has a very strong social media presence. They post very impressive gross margins, and their DTC marketing is top-notch. In the way of weaknesses, it's not really a unique business. We see that there are other pet care as a box companies because you cannot patent a subscription box. This means there will always be copycats. And potentially also as a weakness is that they may be overly reliant on subscription-based income. In the way of opportunities, consumer pet spending has never been stronger. They're introducing new product lines like Bark Bright and Bark Eats, and as we start to recover from COVID, they may have new opportunities open up with their Bark Park shared experience. But let's be very clear, there are quite a few threats. Most namely, we're investing in a SPAC. We have a limited financial history of Bark. If we see an increase in the churn rate, the rate at which people leave the subscription service, we could see a serious downturn for the business. And a major thing to look out for is the lockup period before all shareholders' equity becomes liquid. And now, we get to the final act, folks. My take. Full disclosure, if you haven't picked up to this point, I'm long in the stock. BarkBox, in my opinion, provides a unique opportunity for investors. We have not experienced a single year of decrease in pet industry expenditure in the United States since at least 1994. In the past 10 years alone, American pet spending has more than doubled. Currently, it is estimated that more than 67% of American households own at least one pet, and the number one pet in the United States being dogs. I am included in one of those households. I am additionally a subscriber to Bark Services, and here's my honest opinion. I save probably $20 a month using the service as a dog owner. Let me repeat that. I am saving money by using a luxury dog service because these are things I would have to buy every month anyhow. I would have to buy my dog treats. I would have to buy my dog toys. If you are not a dog owner, let me explain quickly. A solid toy from a cool retail store is typically at least $15, and if it has a cool little brand on it, it's probably $25 to $40 for a dog toy. That toy, when it gets home, lasts my dog two to three hours before it's ripped to shreds. What I found with BarkBox is not only do I pay less for the toys, but they're actually a higher quality. They're not ripping, they're not breaking. They are actually lasting the entire month. I have had one example in six months of service in which one toy did not last, and Bark was actually kind enough to get a free replacement out for me. 
My most pressing concern with the investment, though, comes with their own ability to meet expectations. I don't know that Bark will be able to grow revenues in 2021 by almost 60% year over year. It seems a little doubtful, to be honest. If revenues were to come up short, I would assume all other metrics would as well, including their future estimates. One factor I probably didn't cover enough, though, and I think it might actually be the X factor, is that Bark has an absolutely unique presence on social media. They are super actively engaged, and they have highly innovative products that have allowed Bark to capitalize on both growing pet expenditures as well as the booming e-commerce economy. The reason I'm not as concerned about them missing sales is that they do post much higher margins and I hope that their effectiveness at capturing each cent on the dollar will make up for any shortages in sales. Although we don't have a date for the merger yet, we do know it's expected to close in the second quarter of 2021. Quarter 2 started April 1st and runs through the end of June, so we know that the merger is coming and it's coming rather soon. And as just one final reminder, guys, I'm an individual investor. I am not a financial advisor. This has not been financial advice. My name is Dave, and this has been The Market Board.